even though the JSE has some exposure to earnings from offshore companies and, 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 and offshore markets, it's still only 1% of the world's markets. The hardest question I suppose that most investors want to know. It's important for us to ask the hard questions. Hi, my name is Jean Menard. I'm the Managing Director of the Old Mutual Wealth Trust Company and we look after the private client securities proposition. The hard question I'm tackling today is how much is enough to take offshore? Why it's a really hard question is it's a really personal question that is actually quite different from investor to investor. And I think it depends on a number of factors that needs to be analyzed in your, in your own personal circumstances. However, I think there are three things that I want to compartmentalize that are really important to talk about. Firstly, one of the key reasons to invest offshore is because of diversification. The reality is South Africa's economy is roughly about half a percent or slightly less than half a percent of the world economy. And therefore the companies in South Africa really doesn't represent enough diversification given what is available to invest in offshore. Even though the JSE has some exposure to earnings from offshore companies and, 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 and offshore markets, it's still only 1% of the world's markets. So the opportunity to take money offshore and invest in a, in a wider diversified set of investments and, and companies and other fixed interest markets is really a great opportunity that, uh, that we are afforded as South Africans. So I think even, even if you have very specific personal circumstances, investing offshore just because of diversification plays a key role. The second very important reason to invest offshore is really about opportunities. Fortunately or unfortunately, economic growth and change happens um, at different paces throughout the world. Therefore, companies that are exposed to different markets experience different speeds of growth and are exposed to different opportunities, changing demographics, innovation, growth, economic circumstances. For a portfolio manager, it is really important to be able to exploit or you know, in, to, to go after opportunities that might be in, in foreign jurisdictions or in foreign markets or listed in different companies. Specifically, a lot of the big companies in the world are listed, still listed in America. And through investments on Wall Street, you can get access to opportunities and global companies that are invested all across the world. From time to time, it really is important to explore those opportunities, not just from a diversification point of view, but also from an expected return point of view. Another important factor to mention is that the Joburg Stock Exchange is currently experiencing a few delistings, and we're not seeing a lot of new companies entering or being listed on the exchange. This means your opportunity set on the JSE is getting smaller. That in itself might only be a phase, but it has highlighted the fact that the JSE is often dominated by a few large businesses or, or companies, and those companies often are natural resources, which doesn't allow private investors to get adequate diversification. With our pension funds also being regulated by Reg 28, which sets limits for the amount of assets that can be invested in different asset classes. Recently, the amount that can be invested in foreign assets has been lifted to 45% which now presents a lot more opportunity for portfolio managers and asset managers to diversify your assets across the world. Thirdly, and an emerging reason that I think has become really interesting in the last few years, especially for South Africans, is something that I call future responsibilities. The technical term is asset liability matching. And your liabilities are really your future responsibilities. And when we look at what's happening to South Africans, especially high income and high net worth South Africans, is their future responsibilities are changing. And some of those responsibilities might not be denominated in rands anymore. So in order to make sure that you have enough money to look after those responsibilities in the future, you're investing in a foreign market might be much more appropriate. The types of things I'm talking about is education offshore, paying for tertiary education for a child, or for yourself, maybe thinking about living or immigrating uh, later or uh, you know, meeting, meeting the children in a foreign country and needing assets there 
that can produce an income. So investing in foreign markets uh, often then makes it much better to, to, to match this responsibility with an asset that produces income and growth in a, in a similar way. Even if you are not that adventurous, more and more we think about uh, life experiences and having life experiences uh, through holidays, um, mini breaks, uh, you know, short stints working offshore. And again, having access to assets that are growing um, and set aside for those purposes often is very, is, is very appropriate. So therefore, I think every South African should have a portion of the assets invested offshore uh, due to diversification and, and, and also the opportunity. But exactly how much will really depend on where your liabilities lie. If you are very exposed to South African, to, to, to South African expenses, you must not take too much offshore. If, however, you need a very small South African income base, using the opportunities of, of searching for growth opportunities in 99% of the world economy certainly seems attractive. The question of how much to invest offshore has always been a difficult one to answer, but until recently, exchange control has limited the amount of assets that you can take offshore. As we said today, through the special allowances and the increases in the prudential limits, the ability to take money offshore is becoming increasingly easy. Therefore, the question about what is the right number for you has become increasingly re relevant. I think taking into account the three factors I mentioned, diversification, opportunity and asset liability matching, will help you in, to determine what is the right number for you, because that is, it is different for everybody. That's where experts come in. Working with professionals like advisors and portfolio managers certainly can help you understand your personal circumstances, analyze your liabilities and your future your future dreams and goals, which will in turn help you determine what is the right number for you. Thank you.